Welcome back to Paint and Make It Happen. I'm Michael Thompson, and once again, I'm going to guide you through another painting. And this time, a very special painting. As you notice, I'm looks like I'm painting right over a picture, and that's exactly what I'm doing. It's an old painting that I did in class, and it's uh, just something I thought, well, let's just paint another painting over it, just to show you it can be done. Um, I have another one just like it, so don't worry about it too much. Now, I have a knife. It's a whole knife painting. Uh, maybe one little part we'll use a brush for some blending, but 99.9%, uh, .9%, okay? So I'm using titanium white, and I've got some of the sky blue for the sky color. And I'm just putting that paint in just look see how i'm spreading it very easily now this is a little task for me to tell you how to do it so you really have to pay attention to the screen to get a good reference so i'm just rubbing it in and it's blending very easily on the canvas so i'm putting a lot of paint on with my knife and i'm using just a little small flat knife now what i'm doing here is i added some of the burn umber just a very little bit of it, and uh, notice how I'm cutting in where there's going to be a mountain. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm just drawing a, kind of scraping in a line. Now it's mixing with the titanium white, so it's uh, going on a little bit lightly. So see how dark that is? But when it mixes with that, look how light it turns. But this is far away mountains, okay? Now what so I'm doing is notice how it has darks and light shadows into it. That's I'm just letting it blend. I'm not over blending it, okay? Now, if you want to blank out the background completely, you can, but I'm just doing it a little bit at a time. I'm just working my way on. But if I were uh, doing this without a, a photo reference or some kind of reference, then I would, uh, you know, I would probably uh, cover this canvas up so I could get a better picture of it instead of just blocking off spaces. But if you can keep focused, you can just do it a little bit at a time, which is, I think is kind of cool. Control that knife. I like it. It's just a small thin blade knife and you can use a wider one uh, i switch different knives later on some of these they just it's just a trowel type knife it has a the handle drops down it's not sort of like the flat edge like i've used in the past where it's all just the straight flat the blade kind of drops down makes it a little easier so you don't get your knuckles into the paint fourth with these uh with the shapes and the colors and things that's the fun about the knife is you know it's not like a brush it's it can be controlled it can be controlled but um kind of you got to work at it a little more you got to learn to master this thing and learn how to do all kinds of uh things with it, it it'll challenge you and uh just stretch your imagination so i really like that wow it's very light Remember, trees are straight up and down. You got to do vertical shapes. It's all a lot of geometric stuff in this. And they usually just stand straight up. Even if the ridge is going at an angle, they uh, stand straight up. And I'm just adding a taller tree. Maybe it's got a little bit more leaves on it. And some of them look farther away just because they're not as dark as that one. And I'm just tapping. Now, do remember, as I always say, I have sped the camera up some in these uh, photos, but not enough to be disturbing or anything. I normally do not paint this fast, but I can paint fast. But I usually slow down and take my time because I enjoy the journey through the painting and I want you to enjoy it with me. But for, you know, time purposes. <coughs> <coughs> Back and touch up that tree. And I'm just pushing up to make like little sticks and tree trunks far off in the distance. And burnt sienna are good colors to work with. You know, and if you have some Van, Van Dyke browns, good sometimes. That uh -huh. edge rectangle. See it? And what I'm doing is I'm using that white and I'm putting in the waterfall see how it's coming down through there and i'm just barely touching the canvas see that 
if you happen to mess up right here or anything, then just scrape it off, put your background back in, and try it again. That's all you have to do. But, you know, by all means, give yourself a chance. Try to do the whole waterfall before you stop. Or grabbing making some dark black color go back to working the waterfall in see how that water looks like it's just streaming down through there I'm just grazing the top of the canvas I'm not putting a lot of pressure on right there at all uh, when I come down to make that water flow. Just add some of those shadows. Have my little dog in here with me. If he's not in my lap, he is not happy. His name's Didymus. We'll put a picture of him up too. He's a little Yorkie. He broke his leg when he got when he was little, and we've had to have it have his leg fixed, and it still bothers him sometimes because he had broke it so bad going down the steps one Sunday. But he's older now, and, but he still loves me. He just wants to always lay and be with me. Boy, I miss him. something happened to my little dog. So that's what me and him's doing. Me and Didymus is sitting here. His nickname's Diddy. Me and him sit here and we'll go through a nice little painting with you. I'm just adding some some yellow ochre and some of that green into the picture and uh, creating like where some maybe some old moss or light colored rocks is up there on the top. Where the light's getting to them. A certain time of day hits them. Dark it up just a little bit. Notice how I softened that back up because I didn't like how it was just a little bit too bright. In painting, I've added just a little bit of the uh, sienna and some of the, the white in there. See how it brightened it up, but it kind of it's still toned down and you'll see me go back and forth with these like putting dark and light just trying to get it to the right value that i like now i did pull that rock over in front of that water it looked like it's squeezed out between those rocks now give it another dimension and i'm adding some of the dark back in you get it too bright and it just doesn't look right And remember, if you have problems seeing what's going on, just step back and you get a better picture of it. Because sometimes it all just starts looking looking jumbled up, you know, whenever you're up close to it. So sometimes it helps to stop, take a break, just step back, look. Maybe fix you something to drink and then come back. Just take a little break from it. Maybe a sandwich or something. Or call an old friend. You can see where we have, uh, look, I added just a little bit of the red in there just uh, for warmth and uh, just to throw a, a, a different color in, you know. Let's add some, you know, you have all different kinds of colors of dirt and rocks and things. Rocks have all different kinds of colors in them. And I just wanted to add some. Now, I did like the little curl right there where it looks like it comes down. Swoops down there, curls up just a little bit. 
place where you go stand out there. I'm just working on the bottom part down there. Time to make a a bigger tree in the foreground here. There's some in the picture. So I'll just start drawing in a line. Now I have a got that bigger knife there that I have. It's kind of a teardrop like. Don't want to cover up all my little trees I put down in the back over there. So this, but uh, it's back and forth, just like any other type of painting. But this teach you how to use that knife, just trial and error. You know, you learn to create nice little things with it. Things you can't do with a brush, unless you stiffen the bristles up with dried paint. You might be able, might be able to mimic it a little bit, but we don't want to ruin our brushes. Just grab a knife. They're pretty inexpensive at the hobby store. Go to your art, local art store and you can pick up some. Now you can, you know, get some real nice ones, but I think these I've just picked up and they weren't, inex they're pretty cheap, you know, different prices. I mean, now what I do when I pick my knife out uh, is I always fill the tips and the edges. Make sure it's nice and flat and smooth because you, if you run your fingers and you can feel if it's got any little where it was cut out if it was a if it's got any imperfections in it you'll see it on the canvas and if you're trying to get a smooth edge if it's got a little bend or a dent or any kind of little imperfection it'll show up if you're trying to make a smooth sweep across the canvas you'll be unhappy with it and let me say this if you have a knife do not open anything with it in your painting supplies or use it to pry on anything you will ruin your knife and it'll only be good for that one thing because it, you will ruin the edge of it. And I've seen it happen lots of times. I have students there, let me see that. And they, no, don't do that because you'll ruin your knives, what I tell them. And sure enough, they'd have to go purchase another one because they would say it wasn't performing the way it should on canvas that day. And I would remind them of their uh, moments when they were trying to uh, open up a can of medium or trying to break the seal where the paint had dried on it or something you know so the uh windsor newton uh liquid impasto now liquid's a great medium but the impasto is a thicker gel version of it that allows your paint to dry quicker but it does have a little bit of a smell to it so if you have an allergy or the dark shadow keep some up work with them if you destroy them you just have to put them right back in because you'll It'll just make it flat, sort of like the wall behind my painting. Just be of one flat color. And I'm using, now I'm varying shades. Notice I went to a little darker mixture, so I added more of that uh, sap green into that. With what I was doing before with them, I was uh, painting those other rocks just shadows and sculpting in the rocks now i'm adding a i've added a darker shade of green see the dark shades so i took some of the uh, yellowish green color that i have and i've added white to it and brightened it up Put a lot of yellow into it just or not you know keep it on the green side but very bright and then I, w I would add some of the the white to it to make it pop you know make the color kind of wash out but it gives it that like the lights reflecting off of it and that's what i was trying to capture from the picture But you notice the water down there. See how that streams are flowing? There's still lots of uh, good ideas in this painting.
notice I'm just adding more and more of the light on, on the top part of the limbs of that old tree right there. Light's hitting all those down through there. Add all the light to it. Put some on that other side. Light come through there and just kind of squiggle that knife around. Sometimes it'll pull off little pieces just where you need them. But don't overload your knife at this point. I'm just loading the tip of the knife. So it's uh, tedious work. You go back and forth, back and forth, but you'll uh, create, uh, be more effective with your knife at this point. And I think this is the fun part because you're actually adding detail highlights on these trees. Yeah, you go grab some of these. Now, there's like little, see the little stalks of grass down there? I'm just adding some of the highlight on top of them look see that and it looks like the light's catching just the top part of those like little flowers down in there i like doing those i think they're fun and when you do them with a knife you can just kind of flick and then scallop in that in there make different shapes so that grass is not just uh little stalks now it, uh, without anything on they're actually like little flowers down in there. A little cluster of flowers. Pretty satisfied with most of it on here. And it's taught me a lot of things about using the knife as always. But never be afraid to experiment. That's how you grow as a painter is you experiment. If you do the same brush strokes every time, you're going to get the same painting. But if you do different brush strokes and different knife strokes, just uh, experiment with how you load the knife. And, you know, you'll create new paintings each time. And you'll uh, sharpen your skill and make your, uh, your painting uh, brush stroke library bigger. Make your paintings interesting. We're getting pretty close to the end of this one. And uh, I hope you've stuck through there. And I want to thank you for uh, hanging in there with us through this one. It's been a very nice little journey that we've had. And you can just add endless amounts of green shades in this painting. And I'm adding quite a few of my own. <laughs> so, sky's the limit, as I said. Now, before we go, though, I've got that little knife back, and I'm just taking some of the titanium white. And look, very tiny amounts. See that? Just cutting in like a little wave of water coming down through there. Make it look like that water's moving. And I want that glisten. See that? Look at that. Make it look like the water's in motion. But the sun's glistening right across that water. See that?